Hi my loves. Uh, welcome back. Welcome to my first video that I'm uploading. So it's that time of year again. The Met Ball was last night. Last night's theme was camp. Uh, more specifically, Notes on Camp by Susan Sontag, who wrote the book in 1964 about camp culture, queer culture, all of that kind of stuff, like all of the above. So um, I just decided to make this like little fashion review of some of the looks that I think were quintessentially camp. Um, I was originally going to do like a review of best dress, worst dress, like all that kind of stuff, but I don't really want to put that like negativity back out there by doing like worst dressed because some people just might not have had the means and knowledge of how to do it, which is something that they easily could have fixed, but what can we do? It's, you know where we live. So since I'm kind of just gonna go through the looks that embodied like what camp is, I kind of want to do a little background on like cultural phenomena as a whole because I think um, a lot of people don't know what camp is like specifically because it's such like a broad subject so um, I'm kind of gonna go through what I perceive camp as um, and then we're gonna go through and look at the looks and explain why they are camp. So first of all um, I don't think you can claim to be camp or put in the same category as camp if there is no subsection of like queerness to it. Um, like basically there is no camp without queerness. Like it's crucial, it's constitutive, um, it's kind of what camp grew from and like its base of foundation. So camp is basically defined on like a broad spectrum of like cultural phenomena, if that makes sense. Basically it's like deliberately exaggerated and theatrical behavior of style. So like extra. When someone's saying like you're extra, that's a facet of campiness. Um, what's really cool about the Met Gala kind of um, picking the theme of camp is because it's its first like quintessentially quintessentially queer theme since like the Met's conception which is really nice because fashion and camp and queerness and like LGBT are so intertwined that it's really hard to like break the two apart so basically every year there's an element of queerness to it, but this is the first year where it's explicitly like a queer, like canon, you know? A little background, camp has been around since like the 17th century basically, but it's been like an underground uh, queer movement that's kind of grown up throughout the history going through waves of being underground, main culture, subcultures, like all of the above basically, which is where we're at today in our modern world where it's more mainstream with RuPaul's Drag Race and um, people like Lady Gaga and Nicki Minaj and Katy Perry most of the time, like quintessential queer, campy artists. So the theme, as I said before, was Notes on Camp, which was kind of off of the book by Susan Sontag, and in her book she kind of outlines a bunch of, I want to say like queer tenets, about like what camp is and how it's defined. So I pulled a couple of my favorite ones that I think really encapsulate what the Met was kind of hoping, or like especially what the panel of like Harry Styles and Lady Gaga and Serena Williams was um, planning on doing. So in her book, uh, Susan puts, Camp is a vision of the world in terms of style, but a particular style. It is the love of the exaggerated, the off, of things being what they are not. So 
that's why things like drag queens are inherently camp. They're men dressed as women, they're trans women, they're straight women, they're men, they're all of the above. They're a subversion of what we perceive to be true. Next is camp is the attempt to do something extraordinary, but extraordinary in the sense often of being special or glamorous. That's why camp is such a broad spectrum, because you don't have to be huge feather boas, giant Bob Mackie headpieces. You can be something as simple as like a Jean-Paul Gaultier jumpsuit, which is what we're gonna see in a later picture. But you can be extravagant in little things that you do. You can be extravagant in the sense of Elton John coming out in giant headdress and giant glasses and jumping on pianos. You can also be subtle and be camp. It's all in how you carry yourself. It's all in how you present yourself to the world. Next we have uh, Camp Taste turns it back on the good bad axes of ordinary aesthetic judgment. What it does is to offer for art and life a different supplementary set of standards. So we all grew up with those like fashion do's and don'ts, don't wear brown shoes with a black tux, don't wear blue and black together, you need to do this, this, and that, but it doesn't matter. Camp subverts that and it's putting whatever the fuck you want on your body to feel cool, to put yourself out there. It's how you perceive other people is what's kind of hindering your own campiness. Uh, the last quote that I took is, one of the main points of camp is to dethrone the serious. Camp is playful, anti-serious. More precisely, camp involves a new, more complex relationship to seriousness. One can be serious about the frivolous, and frivolous about the serious. Some people who just came dressed in feathers or huge hair or sequins or just beads. People who came in outfits that said something are more, not more or less camp, but they are quintessentially camp. Basically camp is over the top. It's tongue in cheek. It breathes parody. It breathes irony. And camp outfits and camp culture creates community, it creates style, it creates taste, it is a subversion of gender, it changes cultural norms. Each of these factors are rooted in queer culture. It's rooted in the queer experience. Originally camp became part of the queer experience because it was a way for people um, who were on the outskirts of society, spurred by society, to connect with each other and survive this kind of like life and injustice with this kind of humor. Like, they were on the outside of society, but they each kind of had an inside joke with themselves. Being from a really small, like, rural town, it's people like Cher and Madonna and Britney and Prince, who were these out camp icons who weren't necessarily queer, but I could relate to because they had this view on life that was so large and extra and over the top, which is what I felt being like a little gay kid in a rural town when the most people would dress up to go to prom even was a plaid shirt and maybe some white cowboy boots. Camp isn't just about cultural taste anymore though. After kind of its resurgence in the 80s and 90s, it became more of a war cry, a protest made by like our queer community that started to claim social and cultural space that was forcibly put on like ourselves and put on the queer people of the past in a space that was originally denied to us. Camp kind of put us into the mainstream and mainstream media where we could be out and proud and people would look at us and go, 
wow, that's a really cool outfit. I want to do that too. And kind of my final point on the background of queer and camp culture that I'm kind of going to end on is by reiterating the idea that camp creates a community um, around the experience of living in the world as a queer person. More specifically, a community amongst the outsiders, like the queer people, the people who are not afraid to be their true selves in a society that tells them they're not allowed to be their true selves. This community amongst these outsiders can produce power where there may have previously been none. So while a person or phenomenon does not have to be queer necessarily to be camp, camp always, no matter what, has a queer sensibility or a queer tinge to it, which is often driven and derived from people who have lived their whole life on the outside. So now the part you've all been waiting for, the reason that you're actually here, we're going to be looking at my favorite looks of the Met Gala and why they embody the theme of camp. First of all, we're going to be looking at one of the most important looks, I would say, of our generation. Someone who grew up in the resurgence area of camp, so that's why he embodies it so fully, and that is Billy Porter. Billy Porter is one of the most important queer actors alive, I would say. His stint on Pose is such a cultural, beautiful juggernaut performance of our culture and his culture being a black queer man. It's so stunning. So his look is by the Blondes, which are honestly one of my favorite fashion houses of all time in New York. They do clothes for literally every pop star that you love. Billy first of all comes to the carpet carried on a bed, carried by six men, lounging in gold. All of these men are Broadway actors, swings, background, whatever. He said that it was supposed to be reminiscent on Liz Taylor in Cleopatra, and that's what makes it so camp. He has these giant ass bat wings, this gold headpiece, these fringe. He puts on a performance on the carpet. He spreads his wings, he gets off, he walks slowly across the floor. It's quintessentially camp. It's pop culture reference, it's being extra as fuck, it's fashion, it's beauty, it's everything. Next up we have Dua Lipa, who I love, but I wouldn't put her in the category of fashion icon. I love her looks, whoever dresses her lately has been incredible. Which is why I was so shocked when she stepped on the carpet of the Met Gala in this dress that looks like Lisa Frank had sex with this like medieval glass window painting. Like gorgeous. And her hair is this huge like 60s dome with this like bejeweled flower crown. It's this these huge bows that come out of the belt. It's over the top. It's extra. It's culturally relevant, it's beautiful colors, it's a nod to the past, it's perfectly camp in the sense that this is what I was talking about being a subdued version but still reveling in the frivolity. Next in one of my favorite looks I have ever seen in my life, Janelle Monet in Edition Siriano. Oh my god, wearing all of these hats piled on top of each other in that pattern, topsy-turvy cake. She's wearing this Picasso-esque dress with one side being a full outfit, the other a giant fucking eyeball on her breast that actually winked. This is so tongue-in-cheek, this is so pop-culturally relevant, it's gorgeous, it's over the top, it makes no fucking sense, it's quintessentially queer black excellence from Miss Jenna Monet. And next up we have Ezra Miller in Burberry. This look is 
incredible. The designers kind of described it as a horror story coming out onto the carpet, describing camp as a phenomenon that once it steps out into the public it ceases being camp, while at the same time filling the space with the presence of all-encompassing camp. It makes absolutely no sense, but it makes complete sense. This mask, which is his face that he's using, these eyeballs and the makeup all over the place, the diamond corset over the suit with the train. It makes no fucking sense. It's reminiscent of masculine, it's reminiscent of feminism, it's reminiscent of ball culture, it's of mind fuck of trying to fit your mind around him, taking his masculine face off and finding this behind it. It's a philosophical look. It's a gorgeous look. It's fucking amazing. I would still fuck him. He's gorgeous. I love this look. And perhaps one of the most over-the-top dramatic entrances, performances, outfits on this carpet is Miss Cardi B. Cardi B comes out in a Tom Brown comforter. It's giant. She needs like 10 people to hold the round train. She has to walk up those steps and she can't even walk up the steps. The dress is so big and encompassing. It says something about her being a black woman and taking up space. It says something about her being a queer woman and taking up space. It says something about her being someone who is seen or was seen to be on the outside now coming into the light as one of the most important culturally relevant stars of the day. This dress is incredible and you need to understand how important it is to this theme. It's gorgeous. It flares at the waist. It has this headpiece that's full of these like red flowers, the red jewels. The way she carries herself is so camp. She seems to be in the mindset of her coming into like a kid in a candy store. She sees all of these rich outfits and she can't help but act. She can't help but walk up the steps with her arms out, parodying how you're supposed to be when you're famous. And that is what makes her such a camp icon in today's world. Now, we all know how I feel about Miss Katy Perry, but I will not deny that most of the time her Met Gala looks are stunning. This look for camp is, I'm kind of on the fence about it. It's this chandelier dress by Moschino, who we're gonna see again because Jeremy Scott embodies camp. Like, like, whatever, it's amazing. If you go anywhere now, you're gonna see pictures of Katy Perry next to Lumiere, which I think is kind of boring. But personally, I don't really think it makes sense and it doesn't add anything to the conversation about what camp is, really. It's kind of just there. Next, we have Dominique Jackson, who everyone needs to look up right now because she is the main house mother on Pose, which is such an important show, especially if you're queer and you should be watching it. I don't really think there's any excuse. It is coming to Netflix. So tune in, please. Dominique Jackson is a queer icon. Dominique Jackson is an incredible actress. She's a trans woman. She's a black woman. She knows what camp is. She has to because she is camp. She lives, breathes, walks camp. Her dress is by Victor Glimaud um, and Simon Furs, and it's gorgeous. It's reminiscent of like past ball culture. It's reminiscent of these past house mothers that would come out in these giant, floofy, like lame taffeta gowns, headpieces, little black dress. It's gorgeous. It's a subversion of culture. It's a nod to the past. It's a nod to past queer influencers to different facets of queer life. It's another one that is frivolous in its simplicity. This is something that would be a huge statement at like an award show, like, I don't know, Billboard Music Awards or whatever, but it's such a normal everyday outfit for people who live in this world and walk this way, like this life every day. I think it's stunning. She looks gorgeous. 
her makeup is so simple, but yet so severe with those eyebrows and her little pearl earrings. It's stunning. She's stunning. She's incredible in the show. Please watch it, everybody. And we're here at Natasha Lyonne. Another surprise standout for me in this Met Gala. She's wearing uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and again, simplicity and its frivolity. It's gorgeous. It's reminiscent of the past. It's reminiscent of David Bowie. It has giant, giant shoulders, like wings, shoulder pads. And she's wearing this like little Marcel hairstyle with the severe eye makeup. It's so simple, but because it's only like white and blue and this stark like cross, it is gorgeous. It is a standout. It is simply beautiful. Amazing job, Natasha. Next we have a camp icon herself who doesn't know what camp is at all. Uh, Celine Dion, who came out wearing Oscar de la Renta. She's wearing this gown that is like 22 pounds of glass bead fringe sewn in like panels all over this dress. She helped in the conception period. Stunning. Celine Dion is a camp icon because she's Celine Dion. And I think what's great about her is it seems like she gets more and more French every year of her life. Because the interview where she was describing what she thought camp was made absolutely no fucking sense that it made her fit in the theme perfectly without her even coming in that outfit. So, amazing job. We have another dress by Christian Siriano here, Laverne Cox, who, much like Dominique Jackson, a black trans woman, who embodied this so perfectly. She has this blue pastel wig, these giant shoulders, this one-sided hip floof, this train, this gorgeous black dress. Her being there, taking up this space, towering, showing her presence, camp. I don't really have much to say about it except that she looks stunning as usual. Following uh, Laverne, we have Aquaria, who came to the gala wearing Margiela, and it's so perfect. First of all, she could come in a like trash bag and it would still be camp because first of all, she's a drag queen, second of all, she's absolutely stunning, her references are on point, it's just stunning. It's like fishnet bodysuit with ripped up fabric all over it. I don't, again, I don't know what to say. It's gorgeous, it's camp. It, this headdress is reminiscent of the 40s. Movie starlets, which is what camp embodies. Stunning, amazing job. Um, Darren Chris came wearing a Balmain, and it is stunning. He is one of the actors who went on a TV show, saw how people were supposed to be dressing, and came out with that knowledge unlike some others that were at the Met Gala. And he's wearing this humongous bow that takes up most of his upper torso, and this gorgeous like Harlequin style blazer. It has tails all the way down the back. It's Baroque beading. It's stunning. It's gorgeous. It's camp. It's taking a risk. It's putting yourself out there. It's wearing something that makes you feel special, it's filling up the space. So second to last is our country queen, Casey Musgraves, wearing Moschino again. And this is probably in its execution the most camp look there is. Leading up to the Met Gala, she was posting pictures saying getting ready for the Met Gala using Barbie tools, Barbie setup, Barbie PlayStation, all leading up to her driving in, sitting on a pink Barbie car with a giant long ass blonde wig and this pink outfit, this pink leather biker dress, giant boa, stunning, gorgeous, perfect melding of Barbie pop culture, fashion in this leather biker jacket. And the last person I'm going to pick is, of no surprise to anyone, one of the most important people alive today, and the embodiment of modern day camp, and that is Lady Gaga. 
Lady Gaga had four outfit changes and it took her 17 minutes to walk the carpet. That is just not right. She was on the panel who came up with the theme, who made sure everything was set up. She was such an integral part of this Met Ball that it, like, it had to be the only way to make sense for her to do all of this. All of her outfits were by Brandon Maxwell, who, as you know if you've been a Lady Gaga stan as long as I have, has been designing for her since the beginning. He's the designer for the House of Gaga. Um, she brought him to do all of her costume changes, which was amazing. She had this choreography with these black umbrellas with all of her people carrying her trains, carrying her umbrellas, doing all that. And it was this slow, careful strip tease from this giant pink dress that took up the whole fucking floor before the staircase down to this mesh bodysuit. My favorite of her four looks, this column pink dress with these giant Tiffany's cat eyeglasses and this phone purse where she's walking around looking like a busy businesswoman. And that's Lady Gaga. It's who she is. It's almost like camp wasn't invented before her. But we all know that's not true. So that's it for my review. I hope you learned something about queer culture. I hope you can take this away and remember it while reading articles from people who don't totally understand it. Be careful of who you're reading to. A great resource is uh, them, at them on Twitter. A uh, queer run magazine that's stunning, beautiful, perfect. You don't always have to read Harper's Bazaar and Vogue, who oftentimes miss the mark on subcultures. So keep that in mind. Um, I had a great time doing this. I hope to make some more videos. And if you're all interested, be sure to like, tell me about it. No one's gonna see this except my friends, so just like text me. And yeah, I'll see you next time.